Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. We continue our coverage here of the bitter boardroom battle, the battle between Cyrus Mystery and Ratan Tata. And there is a fresh development and this one is a big one. Nasli Vadia has now served a defamation notice on Tata Sons. This is according uh, to the information that we are picking up. Uh, Nasli Vadia says that the allegations made against him are baseless, false and defamatory. He says the allegations have been made with the intent of harming his reputation a special notice to remove him as independent director has lowered his image and he demands that the Tata sons withdraw these allegations immediately uh, this is the sum and substance of the notice the defamation notice that has been served by Nasli Vadia to the Tata sons let's go across now to our colleague uh, Ashok Bagria with that breaking story. Ashok, can you confirm for us Nasli Vadia serving a defamation notice on Tata Sons? Well, yes, in fact, uh, we have a copy of the notice, and this is a notice, defamation notice, which has been served by uh, Nasli Vadia on uh, Mr. F.N. Subira, who is the chief operating officer, Mr. Ajay Gopi Kishan Piramal, uh, Mr. Amit Ranbi Chandra, uh, Cyrus Mistri. Uh, Farida Khambata, Ishrat, uh, Ishrat Hussain, and other people. So basically, the sum and substance of this notice that has been served on Tata Sons and these uh, people is that uh, uh, Nasli Wadia is saying that whatever has been said against him, there, these are basically allegations. They are absolutely baseless, false, defamatory, and they have been made with the intention of harming his reputation. So if I were to read out from the notice straight away, it says that uh, these allegations are absolutely baseless, false, defamatory, and have been made with the intention of harming my reputation. The special notice of uh, 15th November is devoid of any factual references or evidence, and it has lowered my image in front of my esteemed colleagues on the board of Tata Steel Limited and its public shareholders who you claim will benefit from my removal. Further, the fact that the contents of this notice have been reproduced in various electronic media, daily newspapers and periodicals uh, has irreparably defamed me and damaged my reputation with the public at large. I demand that you withdraw these allegations forthwith. Besides this, uh, there are um, uh, various other things that uh, uh, have been said in this notice. Now, there is another paragraph which I want to read out. And this pertains to the fact that there is an allegation against Mr. Wadia saying that uh, he has been galvanizing the independent directors. Uh, and he goes on to rebut this allegation by saying that it is evident that it was the act of independent directors of uh, Tata Chemicals which led to the vindictive action of moving a resolution of the board of Tata Sun seeking my removal as an independent director from the board of Tata Steel Limited. Now he goes on to say, I believe that the resolution was moved with great haste within hours of the Tata Chemical Board meeting during the late night hours of November 10th and early morning of November 11th. Uh, more on it, moreover, it goes on to say that if I was galvanizing the independent directors, then you are implying that all the other independent directors of Tata Steel Limited failed to perform their fiduciary duties under the Companies Act. And uh, moreover, he says it belies logic and common sense as to why you should not be seeking the removal of other independent directors as well. So the sum and substance is that Mr. Wadia is asking the uh, uh, directors of Tata Sons to withdraw the statements that have been made against him in the media. Okay, Ashok, I just want to uh, you know get you to uh, to once again uh, the. the highlight the important portions of that notice that Mr. Vadia has sent to the Tata Sons. Now, as you just pointed out, Mr. Vadia, they're also very categorically stating that why act only against me? There were other independent directors who sat on the board of Tata Chemicals, who sat on the boards of other companies as well. Why single me out? Can you just uh, highlight that part again, please? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, he says that uh, this is actually uh, a portion where he goes on to say that there was a, a special notice which was served prior to the meeting of independent directors of Tata Steel and an allegation was made against um, Mr. Wadia that he galvanized independent directors and he goes on to say that it's factually wrong. 
But uh, what is more important is that I'll tweet out straight from the note. He says, Mr. Vadia says that if I was galvanizing the independent directors, then you are implying that all other independent directors of Tata Steel Limited failed to perform their fiduciary duties under the Companies Act. And he goes on to say that if there is any merit in your accusation and the other independent directors have indeed following their purported galvanization abdicated their duty, then it belies logic and common sense as to why you should not be seeking the removal of other independent directors. So now this is a very important point that Mr. Wadia is making is that the allegations you are leveling against me that I galvanized support and uh, uh, forced independent directors to act in uh, a direction uh, against their duties, against their fiduciary duties, and even those independent directors should be acted against. And he goes on in his uh, notice to say that uh, uh, these uh, statements have been made deliberately and maliciously to defame me, to browbeat me, to irreparably damage my reputation without any evidence or proof if these statements against him are not withdrawn forthwith. Okay, Ashok, I would request you to hold on. We've got reactions coming into the story that you've just broken. Sriram Subramaniam of IIAS joins us. Mr. Subramaniam, appreciate you joining us. Uh, it is getting uglier, and uh, we now know that Nasli Vadia has served a defamation notice to the Tatars, alleging them of irreparably damaging his reputation uh, and casting aspersions on his motives, and thereby also casting aspersions on the motives of other independent directors. Your first comments. Yeah, firstly, uh, I am from Ingovern, uh, so that I, uh, you need to correct. And uh, uh, my, my comments, apologies. Uh, yeah, my comments. Uh, basically, uh, see, when uh, Tata Sons is alleging that uh, it is due to the non-performance of the chairman, uh, they are also casting aspersions on the entire board uh, because a company uh, cannot perform uh, because of the performance of the board. It is not just one individual. So from that perspective, Mr. Nusli Vadia is uh, uh, correct that uh, the responsibility should be shared by everyone on the board of each of the operating companies. And he by himself is not responsible. And there is no reason for him to be uh, dismissed. So that is, the, uh, that is my take. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, how do you see this matter progressing, uh, sir? Do you believe that uh, we could, uh, you know, we could see sort of this protract uh, a protracted legal battle start uh, on this front at least? Uh, you know, so far the mystery camp hasn't moved either the NCLT or the courts, but do you believe that this matter is perhaps headed to the courts? Uh, of course, this uh, defamation uh, case by Nusliwadia will definitely go to the courts. Uh, but uh, I would think now uh, the ball will be in the uh, with Tata Sun to now uh, actually call for the removal of the entire board uh, uh, and actually replace with the alternate board because they have the shareholding to obviously call for the removal of each of the directors of the operating companies, uh, just like they have done with uh, uh, Cyrus Mistry and uh, Mr. Nusli Vadia. And so that's how it's going to pan out. So I, I see actually when these notices come up uh, for uh, the EGM, they may call for the removal of the entire board and replacement with a new fresh set of directors. You're saying they may call for the replacement of the entire board of these companies? Yes, that's how I, I envisage a scenario of that nature. Okay, Mr. Subramaniam, please hold on. I'm just going to go back to my colleague Ashok Bagri. Ashok, uh, has this defamation notice been served today to the Tatars? It is dated November 21st, 2016, and basically it says that this uh, notice, in fact, Mr. Wadia is writing, I'll just read it out from the notice itself. It says to the members of the Tata Sun, Suns Limited and Mr. Subedar, I'm writing with reference to your special notice which was brought to my attention by the company secretary of Tata Steel Limited on 11th November 2016. Uh, and he says that uh, this special notice and, uh, was brought with the agenda which said that removal of uh, Mr. Nusli Wadia as director. And further on, Mr. Wadia goes on to say that there were principally six allegations which have been made against him. 
The first allegation is that Mr. Wadia has been acting in concert with Mr. Mistri. Secondly, he has been acting against the interests of the Tata Group. And moreover, uh, what follows is a fact that... Uh, Yes, Ashok. We've lost that line with Ashok Bagria, but uh, he was just reading out to us from the notice that uh, Nasli Vadia has uh, sent to the Tatars. Let's bring in Hitesh Jain while we reconnect with Ashok. Uh, Hitesh, uh, uh, so Nasli Vadia serving a defamation notice on the Tata Sons. Your first reaction? Well, according to me, this notice is filibustering. And uh, according to me, again, mm. this is like, you know, diverting the focus from the main issue to non-existent issue. I mean, people who have been in the legal industry in aware that, you know, such defamation suits are filed. And ultimately, there is no outcome in proceedings like this. But uh, I mean, like the, with the kind of way this battle is being fought, this battle is being fought in the, in the media. Now, uh, I mean, when you are uh, on the appointed on the board, there is also a possibility that you can be removed from the board. And uh, when you are removed from the board as a part of show cause notice, there are certain grounds that are given. So frankly speaking, I mean, I don't, I mean, like, you know, purely to say that merely because a notice has been given for my removal and that constitutes defamation. I mean, this is something like, uh, uh, I mean, interesting, but uh, uh, doesn't address the main issue. So it appears that, you know, the, the battle is being fought more in media and on other issues than on the core issues. As that to, you might be right about. That you might be right about because no one has moved court as of now, neither the mystery cap nor the Tatas, neither has Mr. Vadia. But uh, this is a notice that's been sent to Tata's sons. Uh, but uh, let me also bring in Shailesh Hari Bhakti. Mr. Hari Bhakti, appreciate you joining us. Hitesh, they're saying that he believes this is an act of filibuster and nothing more than that. Would you agree, sir? I mean, uh, I have been saying that we now need to focus on how corporate democracy will deliver results. I quite agree that all of these notices flying back and forth are only damaging the reputation of India's finest house and of, I mean, all the people who are involved. And I think the sooner this is put an end to, the better it will be for everybody. Uh, my, my own take is that uh, uh, there is a certain feel of injured pride, a certain feeling of uh, being let down after having served on the board for so many years uh, and then having this whole idea of removal and giving reasons, all of this can cause a huge amount of heartburn, but I can't see it resulting in any uh, claim for damages being uh, actually fastened on anybody in the Tata group. So you don't believe that that is going to be the case. But Mr. Hari Bhakti, uh, you know, we just had uh, 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 Mr. Subramaniam from InGov and say that he believes now that at the EGM, it might even be not just Nasli Vadi or Cyrus Mistri that uh, the Tatars would seek to replace, but perhaps uh, would seek to replace the entire boards of these companies and reconstitute the boards themselves. I, I would be very surprised if that would happen. Uh, my own sense is that they will pick and choose the people who uh, who they believe can continue to govern the companies in uh, in an appropriate way and let us not forget that we have not yet seen the results of the voting i mean each resolution will be voted on distinctly and separately and we should uh, we should await the votes i don't think we can Mm. take a judgment call that uh, in, in every case, ir ir irrespective of the relative shareholding of institutions and the minorities, that the outcome is uh, can be predetermined. That's right. Uh, uh, Mr. Hari Bhakti, you know, Hitesh also pointing out that this has now become a media battle where both sides, uh, uh, you know, th there are daily statements and so on and so forth. This, of course, comes in from Mr. Vadia, but do you see the possibility of this actually going to court? <laughs> my, my fond, fond desire and wish is that uh, the corporate democracy should prevail and then everybody should accept very uh, appropriately the verdict and the result of the voting. And that should be the end of this battle. 
Right. Uh, Hitesh, uh, you just heard what Mr. Hari Bhakti had to say. A quick uh, word from you as well. Well, I think so. I think so because, you know, the parties, instead of addressing the core issues as Mr. Hari Bhakti is trying to find out, try to evolving a consensus or trying to issue, try to uh, settle or resolve the whole issue. Now, the only way option is corporate democracy. I mean, if uh, if, if any party would have had to go, it I, as, as I mentioned uh, earlier, it could have been Cyrus Mystery. And if he has not gone in the court, I'm sure he's aware for, about the reasons why is he not going to the court. So now the battle will be fought in the boardroom. And as Mr. Haribakti rightly says, parties should accept the results and then uh, move on from, uh, uh, from that uh, point of time. Uh, Mr. Haribakti, Hitesh, just hold on for a second. Let me also bring in Jane Gupta, former ED at SEBI. Mr. Gupta, uh, you know, it feels like deja vu. Practically every day we're talking about one set of allegations or another, but this one is now from Nasli Vadia, uh, sending a defamation notice to Tata Sons. Your first comments. My first comment is this, since we do not know what are the contents of defamation notice, so it would be very, very We do actually know, say. sir. We Okay. Okay. We do actually, actually know what the contents of the of the. So let me let me then just for the benefit of our, all of our viewers who may be tuning in uh, uh, at this point, uh, and for those who are already with <coughs> us, let me get our colleague Ashok Bagria who broke the story to very quickly recap for us. Uh, he has a copy of the notice. Ashok, very quickly, if you could just. We've lost that line with Ashok, but broadly, Mr. Uh, Gupta, the points that uh, Mr. Vadia is making is that, you know, this business of this resolution being passed against him was done in haste. It was made public in print and electronic media. It's caused irreparable damage also by car claiming that he galvanized support of independent directors in favor of Cyrus Mystery. The Tatars are actually also casting aspersions on other independent directors and thereby he also asked that why single him out uh, as the only independent director that they want to act against. Go ahead, sir. So, okay, <clears throat> as I understand, so first of all, there is no law which says that if you are taking action against me, you take action against all of the people. So that means on sure. that ground, Mr. Vadia's point is not correct. Secondly, everybody, every <laughs> shareholder has a right to move a resolution. And if that be the case that a person who is being supposed to be removed says that I am going to file a defamation case, then the entire corporate democracy would crumble. So I don't think there is any case for defamation on this ground. If it is, there is a case of defamation, fight it alongside, but don't fight on the corporate battleground. So... In my opinion, whatever we have seen, whatever we have heard that is appearing in the newspaper and <clears throat> TV channels, I don't think that there is anything which is so defamatory which will cause a defamation action to be caused and survive. So my initial thoughts are that it is not there. And I was listening to Mr. Haribakti. The very sim simple fact is that the boardrooms have to be <clears throat> constituted by the shareholder. They cannot become a battleground for individual personalities and if that that becomes the case then the entire thought process behind bringing governance would fail because if the boards are divided then they are not going to deliver value for shareholder what for they were created so to begin with the boards cannot be divided and if they are divided then people who are divided should voluntarily leave because there is no business, there is no lifetime contract with the board member that you should be there on the board. If, if I don't get along mm. with a person, if I don't find something, I should quit automatically. Why there should be need for removing me? Mm. You're right. Uh, let me get in uh, final words then, uh, Mr. Hari Bhakti. Uh, you know, uh, I think we're all, uh, I, from what I hear from Mr. Gupta, from Hitesh and uh, all our other panelists, everyone seems to be echoing exactly the same sentiment that now let the shareholder decide at the EGM. But I suspect that we're going to see more of this, Mr. Hari Bhakti. Yes, we will, uh, we will see transparency from both sides and we will see that both sides will try to protect their own good name and which I think is fine and healthy uh, but ultimately we must respect the vote at the EGMs and act according to it and get on with the business of actually releasing shareholder value for all the economic interests which are involved in the Tata group which includes you and me and the entire nation all of us are so keen to see that the group that we respect and that we have 
come to know as uh, uh, as a symbol of so many good things continues to flourish and i i'm not really taking sides but i'm saying that we want to see corporate democracy establish itself the rule of law the regulation all of that should take now charge of the situation and get us beyond this Hitesh, uh, you know, I think everyone uh, would would echo what Mr. Hari Bhakti is uh, is saying. At least everyone who's not directly involved in this bitter boardroom battle. Uh, but uh, do you believe that? Uh, do you see the Tatas backing down at all? Uh, uh, Mr. Vadia, in his notice, saying that withdraw the allegations made against me. Do you see any possibility of that, given how things have panned out so far? Well, I don't think so because if they have uh, issued the notice, and uh, I'm sure this battle is going to be taken right down to the wire in all this EGM, and uh, I don't think anybody is get threatened by such kind of defamation notice. But uh, it is very unfortunate that the parties have come to this effect where uh, they are indulging in filibustering and they are uh, fighting on some non uh, non issues. So I think uh, you are going to get more and more of breaking news. There are going to be allegation and counter allegation till the EGMs are not over or till the parties are able to arrive at a decision. I think the parties, the way that's been going on for last uh, one and a half months, you are going to continue to see the battle being fought in media.